NASCAR desperately needs to fix the short track package. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to your video. Today, I'm talking about NASCAR's short track dilemma and fixing the short track package. Over the last week or so, there's been a lot of talk and conversation around the short track racing in the NASCAR Cup Series. While the Xfinity Series and Truck Series generally put on some really solid and great racing at short tracks like Martinsville and Richmond and Bristol on a consistent week-by-week -week basis when we're at those race tracks, the Cup Series since the next-gen car has come into play. The racing on short tracks and even road courses especially has not gone very, very well. And for the first time, I feel like in a very, very long time, you have a unanimous amount of people who are generally asking NASCAR to fix the problems. You had Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi on the teardown, begging NASCAR to save the short tracks. Eric Estep had a sign in his post-race review, basically having a sign saying, save the short tracks. Denny Hamlin, on his podcast, desperately is begging NASCAR to also fix the short tracks. I saw Joe Logano saying we need a smaller tire on the next-gen car. There is more push than ever for NASCAR to fix short track racing. Why? Because short track racing is the bread and butter of NASCAR. That's how NASCAR got found in the first place. When NASCAR became a sport, we all race on dirt tracks and short tracks across the country. That absolutely desperately needs to be fixed. And everyone in the industry is begging NASCAR to fix the problem. Now, NASCAR earlier this week, and Ellen Sawyer was on Sirius and NASCAR Radio, he is not unaware that we have problems. He is aware, and they are adamant that it's unacceptable that what is happening. They have said they are working with Goodyear to try to resolve and fix the issues, and they're going to go back to the drawing board and get with Goodyear. They're looking at what happened to Bristol Motor Speedway, though that was run in an intermediate package because he used Bristol and Dover during the intermediate package, and they're looking at what happened the first 30 laps of Richmond and going back and talking to Goodyear. Now, whose fault is it for the situation? Well, I think it's NASCAR's. NASCAR made a car that was meant to be really, really good on road courses. But the ultimate goal of the next-gen car was to make a car that basically you could take from like a road course perhaps and take it to like a super speedway and take it to a short track. The problem is that has basically caused a lot of problems on these types of tracks. The intermediate racing is absolutely amazing currently at the moment, but the short track and road course racing is unacceptable right now. When you're telling me that people are more excited for Texas this weekend than are excited for Marzo and Richmond, you do have a problem. Because personally, I think Marzo is one of the best tracks on the NASCAR circuit at this particular moment. And if Marzo is continuously having bad races, because while in the past Marzo has had bad races in every generation of car, when it's consistently either putting on terrible racing or mediocre products, you start questioning what is going on with the next-gen car. And we have fans have been panicking for a very, very long time about this, and we have been begging and asking NASCAR to make changes. But I don't want to just keep complaining here. I want to talk about some potential solutions that NASCAR could do to try to fix the problem. And some of these, I think, should be tested during the All-Star Race. Because the All-Star Race used to be aware we could test a lot of things for the future of the sport. Green white checkers got completely implemented from basically this type of racing. Basically, same thing with double file race starts. You know that came from? The all-star race. The numbers moving forward. We had them in backwards at the all-star race. They were basically moved forward. And then, of course, some other things like single line nuts, among other things, were tested at the all-star race. So to me, this is where we need to test this up. Now, what can we do to fix the problem? Well, I think there's five pretty big key components, and there's probably more that you can comment on below at the end of the episode, but I think there's five major things that absolutely need to be fixed on the next-gen car. The first one is adding horsepower. It is no secret that NASCAR has made so many aero changes on this car, and people are saying we should just do aero changes. We shouldn't be talking about aero on a short track, especially when we're going 40 miles an hour in a corner. We should not be talking about aero. Horsepower absolutely is needed. Currently, the next-gen car has 670 horsepower at every type of track except at the super speedways. But personally, I do believe that we need more horsepower on the short tracks. Look at what happened to the intermediate tracks. They were originally going to be 550 horsepower, but we had 120 horsepower and had 670 for the intermediates, and it became the best racing in NASCAR that we have at this particular moment. This car needs more horsepower 
to about 750 or 800 to at least make a little bit of difference. He might even need to get up to 900 or 1,000 horsepower. And many drivers in the industry have been begging NASCAR to add horsepower. Among those are Kyle Larson. I've seen Dale Jr. beg for it. Chase Elliott. I think William Byron's begged for it. Chris Bell. I think Kyle Busch has asked for more horsepower. Even Denny Hamlin has begged for more horsepower. I think if you added more horsepower to the next-gen car... I do truly believe that it will at least fix some of the problems. I don't think it's a complete fix to the issues, but I might be a slight solution to the problems currently with the next-gen car. The second big problem is shifting. Shifting needs to go on short tracks. We never used to shift on short tracks before the next-gen or the Gen 7 came into play. Why we're shifting at a short track, I have no idea. And I think that's the reason why we're seeing less cautions and less contact because everyone's basically running the same speed and everybody's running the same thing. If you got rid of shifting altogether, basically people will become vulnerable because if you can just, if you get hit in the back bumper, you basically could just downshift the car and just set on your way and get going. Shifting needs to go. NASCAR, by the way, was supposed to test a new transaxle that was supposed to get rid of shifting altogether. They're supposed to test that in December at Phoenix. With drivers like Kyle Larson and Eric Jones. That didn't happen. They got they scrapped that test all together and just did another aero test. Shifting needs to go. Everyone has been saying that shifting has been a big problem on short tracks. I get shifting on a road course. That is normal. Every type of car, you're going to be shifting on a road course. We're shifting on short tracks, so that needs to go 100%. If they can find a way to get rid of shifting, I think it'd make a lot of fans very, very happy. The third big thing is more tire fall off. Now, obviously, this is the thing that NASCAR is looking to go to is more tire fall off. Maybe they can find a way to bring groove tires in that create more of tire fall off. The biggest problem right now is that we look at Martinsville, everybody's dropping off at pretty much the same speed. They might be dropping off half a second or second on a run, but the problem is they're all dropping at the same speed. No one's really emerging and pulling away. More tire fall off and dropping like a second or two seconds on the short tracks like we saw at Bristol, I think will create more racing, which means maybe trying out a groove tire or maybe perhaps trying out getting in more tire wear in the car like we had at Bristol Motor Speedway. But a tire at Bristol may react different than the tires at Marzal and maybe trying the intermediate package might be the way to go. The fourth big change is similar to the first big change, but it's the tires once again. The tires are too big. Right now what we have are 18-inch tires. If I'm not mistaken, the Gen 6 and all other previous cars, I think had 15 to 16 inch tires. The tires are too big because they have way more grip in them. I personally do believe that the tires absolutely need to be shortened. Maybe back to what we had in the Gen 6 car. Because the cars are way too much on the ground. And I do believe that if you made the tires much smaller, I do believe the racing will get a lot better on the short tracks. And it also might very similar number three. It might be able to create that tire fall that we are absolutely looking for. And the fifth final big change is all around with the next gen car. The next gen car is absolutely too big in my opinion. This car got way bigger. And this is a very similar problem that Formula One is having. Where in Formula One, that car has also gotten bigger. One of the biggest problems when you have a car that's bigger, one of the big things that comes into play is dirty air. There is a lot more dirty air prominent with this next-gen car than we've seen in other previous cars, even the Gen 6. Now, granted, it's you can get closer, I think, in the next-gen car and the car behind, but it's really, really bad in dirty air. The car, in my opinion, needs to be redesigned, and it needs to be shortened. I know it's going to cost a lot of money to do that. But still, I believe that the car is absolutely way too big. In general and in conclusion, we need to save the short tracks and we need to get the short track package absolutely fixed. This is now the third year of the next-gen car. We were not as bullish on getting this fixed two years ago because it was the first year of the next-gen car. But everyone has been saying for the last two years that the next-gen car does not race good on short tracks and shorter ovals. This needs to be resolved absolutely immediately and again i can mention earlier nascar is looking at adding a different type of tire but you can't just look at the tires there's a lot of big problems with this car they fundamentally screwed up this car nascar did and i'm glad that they at least admit they screwed the pooch here 
but they absolutely need to get this issue resolved. Otherwise, every short track on the NASCAR Cup Series schedule is sadly just going to go away. There's a lot of talk that Richmond is more than likely going to end up losing a day at the end of this year. We don't know the future of Bristol. They may lose a day because of potential return of a track like the National Fairgrounds if it ever comes back. There's a lot of talk about a potential possibility of North Wilkesdale getting a points paying race, but North Wilkesdale was not very good for the All-Star race, and they just had a repave very recently. In general, we need to see changes done immediately to the next-gen car on the short tracks, and honestly, even on the road courses too. There need to be big component changes because the cars are too comfortable for the drivers. They're too good for the drivers, and they're way too comfortable. The racing is always at its best when the cars and the drivers are uncomfortable. If we can find a way to make the cars more uncomfortable for the drivers, I think the racing on track will only get better for drivers involved in the sport. We need to see changes on this car immediately. And I know they've got, we don't have another short track till around Iowa or maybe North Wilkesboro. There need to be changes by the time we get to Richmond or by the time we get to Iowa. In fact, these changes need to come in very, very soon. Or maybe at this point, just get the Gen 6 cars out of the garage and go ahead and run those at this point. Because honestly, they need to do something different. What's been going on right now has just been unacceptable. And short track racing has just not been good in recent years. So I really hope NASCAR makes some executive moves and they make some changes in the next gen car to fix it. So the racing get better on short tracks very, very soon. So that is going to be today's special broadcast on the short track package. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. The on so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support on Patreon as well. Let us go to below that and comment your thoughts well on today's video. You absolutely tell me if you think NASCAR needs to fix this and tell me what changes you'd like to see that I did not mention in this video. Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Later tonight on the channel, we have the Craftsman Truck Series Race Review from Texas Motor Speedway. Then tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have basically the poll winner for the Cup Series Race. We're going to have the Xfinity Series Race Review, the Shane Van Gisbergen video. And then on Saturday, Sunday, we're going to have the starting lineup video. And we are also going to have the race review for the Cup Series Race at Texas. And then we're going to be headed, I think, to Talladega next week, which should be really exciting. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.